To fully understand the other parameters under the Options section, let's go back to the smiley face with just a fill. This smiley face is made up of several paths grouped together in a path group, which has its own transform. Remember that when selecting either the transform or the path group itself, it's the path group's transform values that are altered, not those of the layer. Now we can select this path group, duplicate it, and move it down. The path group disappears when it's duplicated because the Boolean operation is set to independent. By switching it back to union, the two path vectors will be united. You can see this by adding a stroke which will show that the two shapes have been merged. Let's move this second path group downwards and you can see that these two styles draw the shapes. Let's delete this stroke for now. As you can see, there is a single fill style that draws both path groups. Let's duplicate this path group again and shift this third copy to the right. If we move it to the bottom of the stack, we can see that its vector data exists, but there's no style to draw it. There is one for the first two path groups, but not for this third one. By adding a second fill style, it'll be this one that'll draw this new path group. Changing the fill color only affects the path group directly above it. This is because the Affected Paths option is set to First Path Group Above by default. This option allows the path group or groups above it in the hierarchy to be drawn until there's a new style, Stroke or Fill. Duplicating this single path group will create a new element from the combination of these two path groups, which will be drawn by the fill. So First Path Group Above refers to the combination of all these elements to create a new path group. This combination stops until there's a new style added. When a new style is added, whether it be a fill or a stroke, the list hierarchy is analyzed and moves up the stack until another style is found. So we can draw these path groups in segments by organizing this hierarchy. If, on the other hand, we change the affected paths option to all paths above, the fill will go up the entire list hierarchy and draw all of the paths. The intermediate fill on the list will no longer be necessary since this new fill with its merge mode set to normal will completely overwrite the previous drawing. If we want to apply this fill to a particular element, we'll have to create a new type of group called a shape group. Let's create a new shape group and move both paths and the styles inside of it. Now style effects are limited to this new group. The fill in all paths above mode will move up the list hierarchy and stop at the end of the shape group. This shape group also has a transform section, which will shift the entire group to the right. Let's disable clipping to see outside of the format. If we change the color of the fill at the very bottom of this duplicate, you can see that despite the options that were selected, it'll move up the list hierarchy to draw all the paths, but it'll stop at the end of this shape group. All paths above mode will only be applied within this shape group. Later, we'll go over how shape groups can be used for many other purposes, like using the shape instancer. By working with these different options, you can control exactly how styles will be applied to paths and path groups, and even how to limit them to certain paths through shape groups. So, the list hierarchy you create within the shapes generator is very important in order to have total control over the rendering of your vector elements. In this video, we went over how to apply styles to different path groups and organize path groups into shape groups to manage the application of styles.